With Bloodhound 1.3, we introduced ACL attack-based takeovers, things like adding yourself to a group or changing a user password. And at the time, the only way we knew of to take over a computer account was by the computer having labs installed and either being able to read or give yourself the ability to read the clear text local admin attribute on the computer object. Now, thanks to work by Eli Shamir and Will Schroeder, we finally have a generic takeover of use for computer objects so that if you have ownership of the computer object in Active Directory, you can achieve privileged code execution on the computer itself. Now, this attack may seem a little daunting at first, but go through it a couple of times and you'll get the hang of it and it'll start to make sense. There's a few very complex commands we're going to run towards the end of this, so there's some information we need to keep track of along the way. Uh, first of all, we need to have the name of our target computer, who the admin users are on that computer, and then some information about a fake computer we're going to create. We need the SID, the name of the computer, and the clear text password for the computer account in AD. Next, we'll do a bit of attack path analysis with Bloodhound. At this point, we're assuming we've already done our Bloodhound data collection and we have a good data set to analyze. Let's say that we fished for access and we landed on a system used by the user Alice Operations. We'll pull up that user in the Bloodhound interface and see what kind of privileges that user has. As we can see, this user has no local admin rights, can't RDP anywhere, has no DCOM privileges. Uh, but the user does have control of an object by security group delegation. So we'll click the one next to group delegated object control. And we can see that this user has control of a computer called win 2012 Now let's see if Alice has a path to DA. We'll pull down the pathfinding box, which already has domain admins typed into it. Then we'll hit the play button to see if there is a path. And sure enough, there is a path and it goes right through this computer that Alice has control of. And that computer has a session for the user administrator, which is a domain admin. So this is the point where we need to start keeping track of some of this data. And the first bit we need is the name of the computer we're targeting, which is win 2012 -001. Next, we need to figure out who the admins on that computer are. So we're going to go back into Bloodhound for that step. We'll click on the computer node and check out the info in the tab on the left. There are two users that have admin rights on this computer. The administrator account and this user called bob.accounting. For this example, we're going to use Bob's accounts. So we're going to note that and keep track of the fact that Bob is an admin on this system. All right. Let's go ahead and get a beacon running on Alice's system so we can execute the attack. For the attack to work, we need to have control of an AD object with a service principal name set, and we need a password for that object. Now, AD users by default can't give themselves SPNs. The best bet that will likely work in every environment is to abuse the fact that by default, any domain user can add up to 10 computers in the domain. We can verify the setting is in place by looking at a property on the domain object called MSDS machine account quota. Now to see if that default setting is there, we need to query the domain head object with PowerView. And to do that, we need to get the distinguished name of the domain. The easiest way that I know of uh, how to do this is to use PowerView's get domain user commandlet and grab the first user that comes back. Then look at the DN for the user object. The DN for the domain head is there, uh, DC equals Contoso, comma, DC equals local. I'll use this with PowerView's get domain object commandlet, specifying the domain's DN as the identity I want to find. And sure enough, the default setting of 10 is there, and this means that we can add up to 10 computers to the domain, whether we're an admin or not. Just any domain user can do this. Now, another caveat of this attack is that there needs to be at least one Windows Server 2012 or newer domain controller in the environment. And again, we can very easily use PowerView to verify that. And for this, we're going to use git domain controller and then pipe that to select name OS version and finally pipe that to format list for some nice, easy to read output. So the one domain controller we have here is a 2012 DC, so we are good to go. 
One last thing that we want to check before we launch our attack. We want to make sure that the target computer doesn't already have this setting configured. It's extremely unlikely that you will find a computer with this setting already there. Nevertheless, here's how we can verify that. Use PowerView's get domain computer commandlet, specifying our target computer. Then pipe that to select name, comma, msds hyphen allowed to act on behalf of other identity. And this is the output that you want to see, just the computer name and nothing for the msds property. Now, finally, we are ready to execute the attack. To create a new computer with a password that we know, we're going to use Kevin Robertson's PowerMAD script. Let's import that into Beacon, and then our full command is new machine account dash machine account fake computer, and this is the name of the computer object we're creating, dash password, and then the password specterops123 as a PowerShell secure string object. Okay, the computer is added. And now we need to go back into our notes and keep track of that. The computer name, fake computer. The computer password, specter ops123. Let's verify that the computer object was actually created. Reimport PowerView into Beacon. Then use get domain computer and specify the name of the computer that you just created. We get the computer object back, so we know the computer object was created successfully. What you also want to do is grab the SID of the computer object and make a note of that. We're going to need it in the next step. Now we have everything we need. The target computer name, the name of the admin user on the target computer, and the name, SID, and password for the fake computer we just created in the domain. Now here's where things get really complicated, but don't worry too much, there is a link in the description of this video where Will Schroeder has uh, broken out line by line uh, all of what we're about to type, so you can just copy and paste from that gist. Our first step is to modify the msds allowed to act on behalf of other identity property on our target computer when 2012.001. Now that property is actually a security descriptor and we're simply going to use these four lines of PowerShell to do the modification. Note that on the first line you need to provide the SID of the fake computer you created and on the last line you need to provide the name of your target computer. And remember that this is the computer that we are laterally moving to as part of our greater attack path. Because I'm going to run this in Beacon, I need to scrunch this all down into one line. And this is very easy. Just replace your line breaks with semicolons and make sure it's all in one line. Copy all of that and then prepend it with PowerPick, PS Inject, or however you like to run PowerShell on the target. Paste the whole line and hit enter. You won't see any output from this command, so it's nice to verify that the property was set correctly. And here's a PowerShell code to do that, where we are supplying our target computer name on the first line. And then just like before, we need to have this all on one line, copy all that text, and then paste it into your beacon terminal, prepending the line with PowerPick, PowerShell, PS Inject, or whatever. Now this is exactly what we want to see. We have an allow type ace, where the security identifier matches the SID of our fake computer we created earlier. And now the situation on the target computer looks like this. Bob.accounting is an admin and can do everything you would expect an admin can do on that computer. But now we also have a new edge where fake computer is allowed to act to win 2012-001. And this is just shorthand for saying that fake computer is allowed to act on behalf of other identities to win 2012-001. Basically what that means is that now when 2012-001 trusts fake computer 
to validate the authentication of any user in that domain. And because we know the password for fake computer, we can craft a Kerberos ticket for any user in a domain, and it will be trusted by WIN2012001, specifically that machine. All right, now we're in the home stretch, and the rest is actually really, really easy. We need the NT hash for fake computer, so we're going to supply our fake computer's name and password to Rubius, along with the fully qualified Active Directory domain name. I'll run that on my target via Beacon's execute assembly. And next to RC4HMAC is the NT hash for my computer account. Our next step is to create a ticket for ourselves for the local admin on the target computer. And again, we will use Rubius for this step, plugging in the fake computer account, making sure not to forget the dollar sign at the end. We're also plugging in the NT hash for the fake computer account, the name of the user who is an admin on our target computer, and finally, the name of the target computer. Here, you will need to specify the fully qualified name of the computer. Back in my Beacon console, I'll type out the command and wait for the output. The output says our ticket was successfully imported, meaning we should now be impersonating bob.accounting to win2012001. To verify that, let's see if we can dir the C dollar share on win2012001, which of course you must be an admin to do by default. We can indeed dir the C dollar share. So now we will complete the attack path by pivoting to that machine. Just to easily demonstrate this, I'll use Beacon's psexec psh command, specifying the target computer name and my listener name. We've got a beacon on the target machine now running as a system user. And if we list out the running processes, we can see we have plenty of processes running as a domain admin user. So our attack path is complete. So I think this is a really cool new attack. Beforehand, if you had control of the computer object in AD, we didn't really know how to turn that into privileged code execution unless there was lapse in the environment. But now thanks to Elod's work and thanks to Will's work, now we can. So on the attack side, I think this is gonna open up a lot of new attack path possibilities. And on the defensive side, you definitely wanna go look at who has control of your computer objects in AD and how that may turn into an attack path to a critical asset. Whether you are an attacker or a defender, feel free to email us uh, or hit us up on Twitter as well. That's it, thanks a lot.